Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Third type of uh, organizational level intervention is where whole system is involved. To focus on issues affecting the whole organization or a large segment of it such as developing new product or services, responding to the environmental challenges or environmental changes or introducing new technology. There are various types of the change program where large group is involved where whole organization, all the groups and departments are involved simultaneously as part of the intervention process. We are going to look at primarily two interventions in this category. First is future search conference and then we will discuss open, open space meetings. Comprehensive OD intervention meaning getting the whole system in the room. What does that mean? It means it is getting all the key actors of a complex organization or system together in a team building, future planning kind of session. So people coming from different departments or different functions coming together in the large numbers and they contribute towards team building and future planning for their organization. Our first example of the large group intervention is future search conference. This was developed and popularized by this board. Phase 1 of this process is environmental appreciation. Large number of people are invited for these meetings. They are generally uh, clubbed into smaller groups according to the hierarchy, function and their expertise. In the first stage, people look at the environmental appreciation, meaning what are the changes in the world around us are taking place and in light of those changes what is the desirable and probable future. These two things are being articulated by various groups and these groups after working together on these two questions assemble again in the large organization and large group uh, report that to the large group. Phase 2 is system analysis history, present and desirable future. That means they look at what is the history of my system, means how we are functioning. They look at how we have evolved as a department or group in last few years and as a result of that how we are currently functioning. They also look at what is the desirable future means in future how differently we should be behaving, what are the different measurements we need to follow, what are the different processes and systems we need to implement to create the desired future or to survive in the future which demands which is posing challenges currently. Third stage is integration of system and environment which involves dealing with constraints and strategies and action plan. We groups may identify the desirable future, but that desirable future can be created only by designing systems and processes. We can design systems and processes, but there will always be some constraints in making those systems and processes get implemented and get working. In that context, these groups are encouraged to foresee what are the challenges, what are the probable challenges, what are the constraints and then make an action plan and form the strategy. If you remember in the diagnostic uh, stage, we talked about force field model. Force field analysis can be useful in this stage as well. While identifying what are the new systems and processes, how they should follow, they should implement or follow to embrace the desirable future, to uh, awaken in the desirable future, to function in the desirable future, 
they also need to identify what are the supporting factors and what are the opposing factors are there. And then in the meeting itself they need to identify how to address the opposing factors and the support, uh, supporting factors for these uh, plants. So, this was the very first type of the organization wide intervention which was popular and being adopted in the different formats by large number of organizations. The benefit of this intervention is that you get the perspective from the very large number of people and you get the very diverse perspective. It makes people feel empowered, it makes people feel involved and the one of the basic tenets of the change management process is that people support what they create. In this process people have the feeling, the organization members have the feeling that they are the ones who are taking charge. The, they, those who are becoming the in charge of what they are doing, in charge of their organization and they have the power to change the course of action of the organization. So, it has a psychological impact, it in, infuses energy, it infuses people and it helps bringing out large number of ideas from the different quarters of the employees of the organization. In the strategic planning technique which is similar to the uh, future search conference they adopt these steps. First, there is a group reflection on what business we are in it, by giving it and examining the mission statement. So, fundamental thinking is encouraged in this intervention where they look at what business we are in, what is my identity, what is the reason for our existence as organization. Then groups identify and analyze the various domains that may demand on the organization. If I am an oil company, should I identify just as an oil company or I can look at the energy company? Like these are the questions being addressed and in context of these existential questions and questions related to the purpose and vision of the organization, they identify and analyze the various domains that make demands on the organization. What are the changes going on? Which, in, in, which involves identification of the domain, identification of the current demand of the domain and to identify the current response to the organization to those domains. We discussed in the very first session that there are large number of technical changes taking place. Uh, machine learning, blockchain technology, artificial intelligence, robotics, big data, a large number of technologies are defining and redefining the dif different business models. In the context of these challenges, organizations need to relook not only how to serve their existing customers, they need to they need to relook how their business can be redefined. And in the session on the transient advantage, we looked at how some companies have been able to redefine their business over the years. That is how you see a retailer like Walmart is get, getting into the healthcare, telecommunication companies getting into uh, activities which were the domains of the banking, bankings are getting into the domain of the insurance selling, all that those changes are happening because of their appreciation and understanding of the changing nature of the environmental demands and of course the opportunities coming along with that. But how a company and organization can decide where to venture into, what to look at, strategic planning technique at the organization level is a forum where the collective wisdom is harnessed and the ideas are in, invited to look at what are the th possibilities for this organization to venture into in order to respond to the changing demands of the environment. An environment which constitute, uh, of, constituted of the technical environment, political environment, global economic and social environment. Then to predict the future demand, future domain demand and future organizational response is also done in this intervention. To identify ideal or desired domain demand and ideal response. So, if you look at the first step is about existential question. It is about questioning why this organization exists and redefining the purpose. Second step is looking at and appreciating the environmental demands more closely 
and identifying the most appropriate response. Once the response is identified, it is supported by action planning and then after the action planning comes the most important part of the intervention that is implementation. Implementation requires resources, follow up and most importantly the commitment of the people who are involved in the process. We have already looked at the implementation process of the change. We have looked at the quotas model more closely which has the which describes the eight steps of change. But what change this organization should undertake? In which direction organization should undertake any change? What should be taken up as the change project? These questions are answered in these kind of interventions. Gone are the days when few people only had the prerogative and considered to be competent to think about the strategic direction of the organization and innovation. Nowadays, it is recognized, more and more recognized that strategy and innovation is everyone's job. It is and more so, it is the job of people who are at the interfaces, people who are the interface of the organization and the customer, people who are the inter at the interface of other departments, people who are interacting with a larger number of stakeholders. To get the insights about ma what market is demanding and what should be our action plan, these conferences are helpful. Once the right things are identified, we can follow the quotas model or other model or the cut levels model to implement the change process. The large group meeting are based on certain assumptions. Number one, organization members perception play a major role in environmental relations. Number two, organization members must share a common view of the environment to permit coordinated action towards it. Number three, organization members perceptions must accurately reflect the condition of the environment if organizational response are to be effective. And organizations cannot only adapt to the environment but also proactively create it. These in, uh, large group intervention we have just discussed are based on the assumption that people have the ideas and the competencies. Their ideas can come when they are made aware of the environmental challenge. Their competencies can result into synergies and the coordinated action when they work collaboratively and when they operate from the perspective of the common understanding about the challenges, opportunities and ways of responding to that. Last but not the least, it is not that organizations can only respond to the challenges. The most successful organizations proactively challenge the environment. They proactively change the taste of the customer. They proactively come up with the services which create new market. Whether it is Ola Uber, whether it is Swiggy, whether it is iPhone, in all these cases we see it was not the demand of the environment, a direct demand of the environment. It is these, it is these companies proactive thinking which has created the market or which has activated the market, which has converted the hidden need of the, of the customers, hidden need of the society into a tangible market. This kind of thinking can be promoted in uh, large group interventions. Large group interventions require a very sound preparation. All the instructions must be clear, agenda must be clear and communication also must be so preparation for the large group meeting involves identifying the compelling meeting theme. If theme is not compelling, people will not be motivated to participate. Selection of the appropriate stakeholders to participate. If meeting is underrepresented in terms of some stakeholders, some critical stakeholders missing, these large group intervention will not be successful. Development of the relevant task to addressing themes. Very important thing is that the ideas which are identified converted into action planning. That's where 
the managerial skill comes. We may have great ideas, but we may not be able to convert those great ideas into action, managerial action planning and the general action planning. So, these three things are essential for any large group intervention to be successful. We are going to look at two methods in the large group intervention further open system method and open space method. Before describing these open space method and the open system method, we must remind ourselves that following up on the meeting outcome is essential for the success of this intervention. Now, we are going to look at a very interesting intervention called open space method. John Harris is the person who popularized it and the birth of this intervention also is interesting. His team, John Harris team organized a conference, an international conference and like any other international conference, they had to prepare for one whole year or two years to identify the speakers, to make the schedule and to take care of all other logistics. Conference was done well, it was very well organized, people were happy attending that, participants found it useful, interesting and intriguing. In the feedback, Harris, it was, it came out that the most productive uh, time slots were during the lunch and tea breaks, where people got engaged into open discussion. So, participants identified the most productive time slots were the tea breaks and the lunch breaks, because there they were getting opportunity to interact with others in a free flowing manner. Then the propounder of this method thought that if that happens to be the free time, so called free time happens to be the most productive time of the conference. Why can't we have the conference which mostly has the free time? And based on this insight, this open space method was proposed. Open space method starts with setting a condition for the self organizing. It means first they have to announce the theme of the session. So, when it is conducted in a business organization, theme of the session has, is announced. It might be quality control, it might be innovation, it might be strategic response, it might be developing new process, uh, developing new services and products, etc. So, uh, announcement of the theme of the session is the first thing that directs the energy of the people towards one uh, domain. Second is establishing the norms for the meeting. There are two types of norms. The first is law of two feet that simply means those who come for the meeting have to take the responsibility of holding the conversation, standing by the conversation and implement and the commitment for the implementation which comes out of these conversations. If you cannot take the responsibility of what you say and what you are supposed to do to implement the ideas emerging from that meeting one should not come for the meeting. So, that is a law of two feet. There are four principles. The first principle is whoever comes is the right people. It this principle make people open minded to interact with as many people as possible without being judgmental about who is more valuable and who is more relevant to talk to and who is less relevant. Second principle is whatever happens is the only thing that could happen, could have. This principle make people ready to embrace the surprises. This principle make people sense to that living system has the quality of emergence. That means, outcome may not be exactly the way you think about. So, we should be welcoming and open to accept that outcome. Third principle is whenever it starts is the right time. That makes participants ready to be active 
instead of waiting for the more people or specific conditions it this principles this principle make participant to be action oriented and proactive in their role and last is when it is over it is over this principle help the participant to move on if they have completed discussion on one thing they need not to strictly carry on the uh, dis discussion just to uh, spend time they can move on to the next thing or related things so once these norms are established participants create the agenda and coordinate the activity through information posting how participants create agenda under the identified themes after setting up these norms participants are invited to suggest the sub themes or the specific projects they would like to be participating in order to fulfill the agenda of the uh, open space man so suppose there are 100 people they are invited to present what they are passionate about what project they would like to initiate what activities they would like to initiate or carry out in order to fulfill the agenda of the theme so few people take the initiative they become responsible for those particular initiatives and others those who have not uh, taken the leadership in terms of proposing group projects or coming up with the different activities or processes this agenda being created by the different group members is being opened and people sign up for the different projects being floated in the process so suppose there are 500 people if 25 people initiate and take the initiative of taking a project those 25 th sub themes are projected communicated to all 500 people and other 475 participants sign up for some or other of these 25 sub themes with the signing up they get to know the time and place where groups who have signed up for these sub themes or the projects are going to meet so they go back to their respective groups identify the problems challenges opportunities or the product project plan what should be done under that theme and uh, then they come come back and report that to the large group in this stage coordination activity through information posting is very important if there are 25 groups working on 25 different projects or processes what is being transpired what is the outcome of their discussion has to be quickly recorded and circulated to the large group and if someone in the large group is interested to go back go to that group and give their additional input they are encouraged to do that and in that process the whole group uh, is benefited by the participation in these sub groups the person who is the person who proposes that project or the idea has to remain with that idea and other group members actually can move from one group to the next group and can keep giving their perspective and ideas the person or two who are the coordinators of the each group have the responsibility to compile what is being discussed in terms of the insights what the insights they have got what are the ideas emerged what are the uh, project ideas or the process ideas emerged all that is being documented and reported to the large group large group uh, people become aware of it and then the second phase of discussion starts that may be more focused on prioritizing on those ideas and developing the implementation plan there are large number of organization which have implemented the open space method this method is particularly relevant for promoting the innovation across the organization or identifying is some smaller innovation but high impact initiatives across the departments and functions in the organization so what should be 
the intervention in this situation. The second situation we looked at was of the large pharmaceutical company operating in India. It is realizing that patent of many of its molecules are expired recently or for some it is going to expire uh, in the near future. There are many small companies with their agility are able to make dent in its market share. Second, the industry is witnessing innovation in not only the molecules but in other processes like drug delivery, insurance facility with very expensive uh, uh, drugs and so on. The growing realization in the organization is that to retain the leadership position they have to be innovative organization and innovation need to happen in all the processes and systems not only uh, in terms of developing new molecules. So, what might be the most appropriate intervention here? Open space method. So, the open space method was used in this situation because organization wide innovative projects were needed. A small groups were constituted within all the divisions and functions and they all were encouraged to identify the innovative projects. And for that open space was found to be the most appropriate. Another situation we discussed was of the head of the quality and production department of the capsule cover manufacturing plant who were almost always at the loggerheads. The acrimony between them have been percolated down among the employees of their departments. No department leave, none of these two departments actually leave any chance of putting down another one in joint meeting of the plant and one to one review meetings with the plant heads. What might be the most appropriate intervention here? Intergroup conflict resolution. And our last example was a welding electrode manufacturing plant. The production demand increased drastically and though they were able to respond to that demand in last few months there were customer complaints about the quality of the product. And simultaneously the conflict among the shift in charges, finance and operations and different departments also has increased. Culture of, of this organization has been positive before but the smaller conflicts arising among the different departments due to changing work demands are making the management and employee concerned about the future of the organization. What might be the most appropriate? Based on this discussion, what recommendation you can make about uh, appropriate intervention in this situation? Microcosm group intervention was conducted to address this issue. So, I hope that you after this session you are not being not only being exposed to the variety of the organization wide intervention, but you also become sensed to that what might be the most appropriate intervention in a specific situation and that understanding comes with the right diagnosis. A right diagnosis leads to understanding of the right intervention. To identify the appropriate intervention, we need to have both the uh, level of knowledge knowledge of the diagnosis, how to diagnosis, diagnosis data collection must be robust and at the same time we must have exposure to the uh, plethora of the OD interventions. So, that out of those we can pick up a most appropriate intervention suitable for that condition.